We're live. Hey, it's Cisco here. I'm here with my mom. And we are going to do part two of Doki, Doki Literature Club. We played this game about maybe a week ago. Could have been like a week and a half, maybe. But we're going to continue it because my plan was to play this game to the end to see how it turns out. In, in the future, I will be playing, playing and finishing other games. Some games I have in my mind are... Some games I have in my mind to play are Kingdom Hearts, uh, Dark Souls, Pokemon, etc., etc. And then on the occasion, I'll be uh, either playing like Call of Duty, Halo, or Smash. You know, just some multiplayer game where I can play anyone who wants to uh, challenge me. So we're going to start. We're going to continue from where we left off. Um, do you remember what happened last time? Uh, I believe so. Let's just put it back on. Uh, if I... I, I do. So what I remember, uh, from the beginning, uh, Sayori, our childhood friend, convinced us to go join the literature club. We did one poem so far, and we, we also read their poems. We read Yuri's poem, which is in script. And we have a crush on the girl with the purple hair. Thank you. Uh, is it purple? I thought it was blue. Or, well, we'll see in a sec. But uh, yeah, so we, we did we did one we did one poem so far. We did a second poem, but we haven't read other people's poems yet. That's where we stopped, I believe. And from what I remember, on the first day, we just like read their poems, and um, the, the pink girl's poem was very simple. Sayori's poem, your friend, was also kind of simple. Yuri's poem was like, the script and probably the most complex, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then on the second day, they were fighting over their poems, if I if I'm correct. And now we're on the third day, so we'll just continue from there. Load game. Oh. So let's see which one you can see time wise which which one's the first. Alright, so you, you can use the skip button to fast forward through your text. Okay. Purple hair, see? Uh, I guess. Yeah, that's purple. I, yeah. It looks kinda black to me too a little bit, but it's purple. You think it's purple? I think it is purple. I guess. Uh the spell is abruptly broken. What? I'll I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Oh, you want to do the talking again? Uh, um, wait, who's Mitch? Mitch, no. Mitch, is, Mitch is me, I guess. So. Okay. Yeah, Yuri picks the teacup from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily cannot clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Yeah, so now we have to do the poem. Who's, who should I... Who should I show my poem to next first? Um, again? Yeah, that's how this game works. We talk, we make poems. Well, we, and we did this already. Okay. okay. This is the second. We uh, made another poem, remember? Sayori. Sayori. Okay. Ooh! I like this one, Mitch. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Give me a sec. Let me do this. Let's read this. Oops. Oh, I didn't see. Alright. Is it bad? No, it's not too bad. I don't know how I did that. That was an accident. Okay, let me just fix that real quick. One sec. All right, let's continue. So that's going to be down here. Oh, your turn. Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. 
but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure. I'm that, not sure oh, you? exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feeling is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. <laughs> Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh, you want me to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But, but you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Yeah. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well... Hmm. Oh. I like happy the most. But sometimes, when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice, ra a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Uh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at this expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Mitch. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? You can read it. Bottles, I pop off my scalp. Where? I can barely see it. Bottles, I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of Get friends. It. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes a friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. You have to scroll up. Oh, sorry, I'll do that for you. Yeah, right there. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf can use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open, and, and in come my friends. In they come in, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding, holding them out, oh, where am I? Holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the towel between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. 
They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Yeah, so there's supposed to be a meaning to every one of these poems, but we would have to probably like take a minute to an anal uh, analyze it to uh, see that. But each, each, as you can see, each character has their own uh, writing style. So we'll just continue. But, here we go. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? That was, I think it was a lot more deeper than the first one, if I can remember. I liked it. Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You got in pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori always has a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eye makes it hard for me to be, to be pessimistic. All right, to our next poems. Who should I show my poem Monica. to next? Monica. Monica. Uh, Monica. Hi again, Mi oh. Hi again, Mitch. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> you never know. Want to share what you wrote, f what oh. you wrote for today? Yeah, sure. Here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that? You must be pretty into her. Eh? Uh... You're completely misunderstood. 
Uh, calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers at that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong oh, with me. that. Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway. You want to read my poem now? Yeah, let's read it. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors that won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... What's that word? Uh, have I seen that word before? Cacophony? I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up, actually. I'm kind of curious. C-A-C-O-P-H-A-N-Y yeah. hmm. oh, yeah. You can back up a bit if, if you want Pi. But they want to see me oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, A harsh, discordant <laughs> mixture of sounds Okay So it's like, maybe like I don't know really, so Something about sounds but of meaningless, meaningless noise So that means she's like hearing like like a, a, an, an array of different um, sharp sounds, I guess. The noise, it won't stop. Violent grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Jeez. <laughs> hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Uh-huh. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of, it's just a kind of thing that I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with the space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Aha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with a with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Something you'll find yourself facing, a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Aha! <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Secret. <laughs> you took her, her advice then, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right, last two. Who should I show my poem to next? Natsuki. Okay. Oh, boy. Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Uh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck it at it. 
honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. Eh? You're not... You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? Keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of... This angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I... mean... Oh. Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. Or at least, Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. You didn't get to read our poem. Very. Who should I show my poem to next? Let's see. What? Oh. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Mitch, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you, you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Oh. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offered I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies uh, as in, what's that saying? As an or, ordinary? Ordinary, maybe. Ordi as an ordinary human, okay. No, that doesn't look like ordinary. Is it? As in... Oh. Unordinary. Unordinary human. Unordinary? Oh, yeah, yeah. Unordinary human. Right. As an unordinary human. Right. Wait, what's that? Okay. Um, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. 
the bread, my hungry curio my just hung hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and and what's it? On er and urge the raccoon and I mean, urge. I, I could try to make the window bigger, but if I do that, it'll mess up the overlay. Ovid. You don't have to go so close though. Near the Ovid. camera. the moon. Um, the, the raccoon and urge the moon. In increments its phase and oh, reflects wait. that much more light off wait, of wait, wait, the cutting wait. knife. The stream's on. Give me a sec. We have to repeat it. The whole poem? Yeah. You Alright, where were we? Um, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread in my subconscious world. The raccoon where... and urge? Oh, that's urge. Okay, yeah. Some, some, just like some of the stuff, unless I made it bigger, it's kind of hard to see. I gave the raccoon a piece of my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my, hung my hungry cur curiosity, the raccoon and urge. The moon increments, increments phase. phase and reflects that much more light of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of, of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry hungry more and more frequently so my bread is, is always handy every time I brandish my cutting knife the raccoon shows me its excitement a rush of blood classic parlovian conditioning have Pavlovian yeah I slice the bread and I feel and I feed myself again I'm gonna look that up too it's not that word, because it's nice to, to know what it's saying. I think it's a type of um. Is that a type of bread or something? May or or type of salami or something. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Okay. We'll we'll go we'll go we'll continue about it. Hmm. You sure? Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to ima imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? The, because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Mitch? Well... Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best way we can do is respect each other and our individualities. 
even if that's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't that many people like you, Mitch. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Okay, give me one sec. I'm going to take a break real quick. We're off? Okay. Alright, come on. Sorry, come. 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 Did you move the camera? No. Okay, everyone. reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for this festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well, just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters. I... Oh, you, mean, you skipped that? Yeah, because I couldn't see it and then that popped up and then you... Oh. The next one. You can't go back? Uh... It's probably not too important. Okay, all right. Okay, that's great and all. Something about posters, I don't know. They always been working on posters. Masuki. But that doesn't even tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the events. 
Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Yes. Performing? Per. Oh, uh, Monica. Monica. Yeah, well. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the events. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite the poems too. Sayori's putting it all, putting it, put. Putting put, it on all po the posters. I got it. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Uh-huh. Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You you didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh well I did. Do you really think it's a bad of an idea if it's that bad of an idea? Well no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're, we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if that takes, and if all that takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over with it. To get it over with get it over with all right phew then thanks Natsuki what about you Yuri Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expect expectant faces sigh I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha, that's everyone. 
You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll stand off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. I'll start off. Can I go next? Aha, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the, the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has the intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished the Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, Monica. Aha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to get a good example set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering, quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the... I can't see. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's uh, as if she's bewildered even herself. It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri a recognition, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, uh, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. 
Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Aha. Sorry, I giggled. Hee <laughs> hee. Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. It seems like she's her poems are like the middle ground between uh, Natsuki's and Yuri's. If I were to read this on paper, I, w I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into something I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Mitch liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Hey, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on... The reading. Sorry. Oh, that. I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now who's next? Nasuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Mitch. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Mitch lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else is. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki.
Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhyme and has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back into her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do th this again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, I just, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise. I, I would think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is so. Well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but... I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. Oh. I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far. I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. I stand. Oh, all right. I stand up. There's no way. I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two. Always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Uh-huh. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Mitch. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sorority once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is a, a, being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. 
Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to. I mean. Like that. Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're, you're kind. Ki you're kind of putting me on the spot here. Hee <laughs> hee. I okay, so you have to answer her. Well, I would walk home with Yuri. I will still walk home with Sayori. Um What what would Mitch do? He does like Yuri. But these are just one of those situations. What do you what do you want to choose? Okay. I think a guy would do what he wants to do and he would walk home with Yuri. <laughs> so we going with that? Yeah. Okay. It's kinda of mean, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sayori. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that what is why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation shows off, and I'm left feeling a little awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Home time. Okay, we're supposed to choose what he, what Mitch wants to make. Right? Yeah, it doesn't matter what choice you make, but it will affect the game in some form or some way. Well, obviously, if you want to make a home that's more like Yuri's, then make the decision. Go ahead. You do it. Uh, I mean, after Mitch, unrequited. Heart. Tone. Rain cloud. Face. Fear. <laughs> this is going back and forth between Sierra and Anxiety. Yuri. Anxiety. What is that? Tragedy. Oh, it left. Uh -huh. Uncontrollable. Cry. Anger. <laughs> What's so funny, <laughs> Kenny? <laughs> um, I think Kenny's watching a video or something. Universe. Um, I don't know. YouTube. Horror. Lust. Oops. <laughs> Double uh, click. Uh, climax. Um, shade. Death. Massacre. Um, clouds. Alright. That last one was, uh, not so easy. That was mostly Yuri for that poem, but we had some Sierra in there too. Oh. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Well, you're 
practicing piano again? Were you practicing oh, piano? Oh, were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. You must have a lot of determination. Undertale reference. Oh, you don't know about that. Starting this, oh. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. Let me just check something real quick. Nothing changed. Okay, so good, because sometimes uh, the files here change as you play the game, and that's supposed to be like a big part of the game, but we'll, we'll see you later. Uh, continue. Oh, did you read this? Re um. Yeah, I read that already. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look for. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because, that's right, in your name. Monica. What? I don't get it. <laughs> Probably, maybe when it's translated? I don't know. Monica, that's that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Uh, so it was okay. Mm -hmm. That was kind of weird. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Hehe. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or. Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh. You're spacing out again. Uh-huh. Uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Oh. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Mitch, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In a what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, 
who was idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Mitch. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Mitch. Me? This guy is really dumb. <laughs> How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well... I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know. Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra glow was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. Around you, Mitch. She's always been a full. She's always been full of sunshine. Around you, Mitch. <laughs> it's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Mitch. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. I'm gonna take another break real quick. Do you have to take a break or does Mitch have to take a break? What? <laughs> Kenny, hmm? when it's offline, the camera's not on you, right? Yeah, it's not on you. I, I, I know it's not right. No. Yeah, you're, you're good. You know. <laughs> oh. you need it, right? What? What? What the hell? Who told him he could be part of this broadcast? Oh, right, hold on.
Okay, we are back. You guys get ready? Yeah. Okay, we're back. Okay, Kenny, your Monica. Yeah. Please. <laughs> we'll just, we're almost done with this. Five more minutes. Okay, um, because that's just how she is when she's around you. Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. What'd you name your guy, bitch? I don't know. She, she did. Oh! I know, I, I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Ciari is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Ciari and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sign and sit myself down. I cry. I know Ziari told me not to worry about her and to have fun with, her, with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But well, there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away, just as quickly, with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere, that she won't get anywhere like this. I never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one. I sit in the one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comforting keeping to themselves. But, if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. When I asked her about it, she didn't even want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Eh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sierra and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading a little too much in. I I'm reading into it a little too much. Mitch? The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Mm hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. 
her, her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I notice her strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori? She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is... I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Alright, you want to stop here? Sure. Alright guys, this is the end of our stream. Um, we're going to continue next week. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>